Thank <laughs> you.
Today, what's up guys? Today, we're gonna see just how big the entire universe is. By the end, we're gonna feel tiny. The distance light in a vacuum travels in one Planck time. Okay, so I think that's like the universal measurement. I guess that's like the tiniest thing that we're able to observe is something called a Planck length and a Planck particle. So it kind of almost looks like a universe in and of itself. This is the size of an average human must be compressed into to become a black hole. Okay. This is a neutron. So we're still at like the atomic level. We're not into space yet. We're not into like Earth or Jupiter or Mars or the Milky Way galaxy. So those are still atoms. Actually, sorry, they were smaller than atoms. This is an atom. And look how much bigger it is than the actual neutrons. That is an iron atom. A deficiency of iron in blood can cause anemia, if you didn't know. That is something called a buckyball. It's the same shape as a, as a football. DNA. Wow, dude. And it looks so big compared to the last thing, which is crazy. Carbon nanotube. Oh gosh, this is like a science class today. That is a pyro parvo virus. That that that's what's a that's a virus. That's bad. Bacteriophage. Okay. A mycoplasma genitalium. That is a okay. All right. We're we're getting a little bit bigger here. That is a meme virus. That thing is huge. I don't like that. That is a red blood cell. It looks like a giant compared to the viruses. That is a white blood cell. That thing, dude, look at the hairs on it. It's got a bunch of, like, tentacles. That is the thickness of paper. We are nowhere near the size of a universe yet. That is a human egg. Wait, oh, okay. I was, I was very confused. I get it now. That's human hair, which is super tiny. What is this? A grain of salt. That is just one Minecraft cube of salt. You can't even see that with your eyeballs. You have to look at everything that we've seen so far in this video under a microscope. That is a British penny. Okay, that's probably like the first thing that we can actually see in real life with our eyeballs. A grasshopper, a six-legged insect that inhabits meadows and fields, if you didn't know. An Amazonian parrot, predominantly green, apparently. A computer monitor. Uh, what, what, what does that say? Charles Lee, Thomas Cornway, these men take your name and take it through the mud. My name's been through a lot. I can take it. Well, I don't have your name. I don't have your titles. I, it, <laughs> that's Hamilton. They got Hamilton in the back. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Defined as the distance traveled by light in a perfect vacuum. Okay, that was the last thing. This is a protoceratops. A, a dinosaur, I guess? That is a human person. That is us. That is me. Okay, what is that? The largest species of ammonite? That thing was bigger than people. A gigantoraptor. Yo, these dinosaurs are crazy big. Okay, that thing looks like a pterodactyl. An allosaurus. It's like a baby version of a T-Rex. The Cardotaurus. That thing is deadly. The Gigantosaurus. That's my favorite. My favorite dinosaur of all time. The Gigantosaurus. The Argentinosaurus. I think it's one of the biggest dinosaurs of all time. The Hubble Space Telescope is bigger than all of the dinosaurs. I did not know that it was that big. Blue Whale. The biggest creature to ever exist on planet Earth. And it's still nowhere near as big as the Boeing 747. The An Antonov AN-255 Maria. The International Space Station is huge! Wow, dude, I don't think I ever saw a size comparison. Hyperion, the tallest tree in the world. I want to see that one day. The Hindenburg class airship. That is super big. That makes like blue whales look tiny. The USS Gerald R. Ford. That is a literal ship that can float. I don't understand how it floats. It, it's crazy to me. The Empire State Building. All right, we're starting to get into things that I know about here. The Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the entire world. Other than the Jeddah Tower, the tallest building in the entire world. <laughs> All right, we're moving into actual space stuff. There's a meteor crater, 1.2 kilometers deep. The Large Hadron Collider. A particle accelerator? They built that thing? That is huge! The tallest mountain on Earth is Mount Everest, but it's nowhere near as big as the Mariana Trench. Chicks Kloob? That's what caused the mass extinction of the dinosaurs, I'm pretty sure. And then you have something called the Crab Pulsar. It is a relatively young star. And then there's a black hole. XTE. Who names these? 
I feel like AI named everything in space. Marathon, a race. Oh, oh, that's how far a race is. Wait a second. That's insane, dude. Rhode Island, 75 kilometers. We want the only known moon of Neptune. Uh, this is, what is this? Complex organics. That, that's a moon. I think this is an asteroid. The largest asteroid in the solar system. If that thing crashed into Earth, we'd all be dead. It's almost as big as the entirety of the UK. Ceres is a dwarf planet orbiting the asteroid belt. Sedna is a wildly eccentric orbit coming close. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, wait. Go back to that. It's coming in close as 80 times or 85 times the Earth's sun distance. Wow. That means it's gotten pretty close to us. Madagascar is 1,600 kilometers. Charon, second dwarf planet in the Pluto-Charon binary system. It is about half the size of Pluto. Then you have Triton, which is the biggest, most dominant moon of Neptune. Europa, which is orbiting Jupiter, which are, we need, these are huge. That's our moon right there. So far we've gone from a literal neutron all the way up to our moon. And we have a long ways to go. That's like, that's like such a tiny scope of how big our universe is. That's like literally like a speck on my pinky of how big the universe can get. Okay, that's our first planet, Mercury. At least in our solar system. There's Titan right there. The only moon to have a substantial atmosphere so we could potentially live on it one day if we figure out how to make it livable and terraform. A hypothetical planet that collided with Earth 4.5 billion years ago? I didn't even know about that. How did I not know about this? We collided with another planet. What is that? A black hole near the galactic center. What is this? Trappist LE, the most promising habitable planets known. And it's only 40 light years away from Earth, which doesn't sound like a lot, but we have no idea how to travel at light speed. So until we do that, until Elon Musk figures that out, we're kind of trapped here. It's kind of funny that its name is Trappist. And that is Earth. That's our home! And that's Kepler 452b, which is 1400 light years from planet Earth. And it's also another promising planet of maybe something that we could live on one day. Millions and millions, maybe even like a billion years in the future when we figure out how to get there. That is a white dwarf, which used to be a sun. That is Neptune. Neptune is so much bigger than Earth. Uranus. What is Gliese? It is the first hot Neptune to be discovered. Oh, wow. The Minecraft world. <laughs> That's insane, dude. They have a Java Minecraft world, which I didn't even realize was bigger than some planets. That's crazy that we made something bigger than planets. Saturn. Wow, dude. These planets are so much bigger than Earth. They look... They make Earth look like a tiny little like rubber bouncy ball. And it's like a giant basketball. Wow, twice Jupiter's radius. Wasp 17b. The moon's orbit is a little bit bigger than that ginormous planet. What is this? Proxima Centauri. That's a sun. And that is an incredibly rare wolf riot star. But it's nowhere near the size of our sun. Look at our sun, and then you can barely just see Earth down there. Earth is so tiny. I'm pretty sure you could fit, like, thousands and thousands of Earths inside of our sun. Just, like, the sheer size of things in our universe makes me scared a little bit. But If you're taking a trip with your friends, why pay for four hotel rooms to stay apart from your friends? Nice. Get an Airbnb and stay together for less. Just like the sheer size of things in our universe makes me scared a little bit, but also like I, I like it. However, I am terrified by it. Like it's cool to think about. It, it, it's almost, I mean, it is just like science fiction. Like it doesn't even feel real because you can't really like see it, but you can, like you can kind of see it. You can look at the moon, you can look at the sun and you're like, hey, they're there. But then it's like, what? 
it's actually real. Like, like it is something floating in space. That's space is just something that's like floating in our universe. And it's, it's just like so grand. And it's so weird to think that we are just so tiny in this huge universe. What are we looking at here? What is this? This is two stars that are orbiting each other. What? And at this point, it's like, you can't even fathom how big these things are. That is Sagittarius A, which is the black hole at the center of our galaxy. The graphics around that look so cool. That is Earth's orbit of the sun. What is that, a ring system? What? I don't even understand what a ring system is, but it looks beautiful. Pistol star. Blue hypergiant star. What is that? The 10th brightest star in the night sky. It, it it has the second largest angular size of any star. That thing looks like a spicy meatball. Dude. Whoa, bigger spicy meatball. That used to be the world's largest star that we know about. That is the current largest star. It, you can't even see our sun anymore. Our sun is so tiny that you cannot see it on the screen. And that means that the Earth, w like, was already tiny when the sun was the biggest thing on the screen. And now it's, it's dwarfed by this ginormous meatball. Wow. Okay, that's Neptune's orbit. Now we're just getting into orbits. What is that? A hypothetical star that existed in the early universe containing a black hole at its core. I actually saw a really cool video about this, that there's there's stars that were so big that they would actually collapse in on themselves so that there was a black hole in the center of the star. And then it would be too big to absorb all of the star. So you would have like the out part, like the outer part of the, the sun would pretty much just still be the sun. But in the middle would be a black hole that would like slowly eat it up until it would eventually collapse in on itself in a giant supernova. And it just sounds so cool. Obviously, if that happened, we'd all die, but it's cool to think about. That is one light day. That's how far we would have to travel. And what is this? Currently the largest black hole known with a mass 66 billion times that of the sun. And that is the distance the sun currently travels in a century. That's like, we are floating through space. We are moving, what is that, 725 is that million billion that's why i am i am too dumb to be watching this video we are traveling so much in space every single day every single week every single year century like we're just floating everything is just floating around it's so scary but it's so cool what is this arp mador one of the most distant globular clusters in the milky way's galactic halo that is one light year that is how far light travels in a year. What? The Oort cloud. A theoretical cloud of planetesimals orbiting the sun at distances ranging from 2,000 to 100,000 AU. I don't even know what AU means. One parsec. A distance unit based on the distance from the Earth to the sun. Distance from the sun to Proxima Centauri. What is that? The Pillars of Creation. A nebula formation inside the Eagle Nebula. The Bubble Nebula. Oh my goodness, dude. We're getting too far out. We're getting way too far out right now. What is this? Distance to what? Toy 799D was the first Earth-sized planet found in the habitable zone of its parent star. That's how far it is? 101 light years away? That's the first time we found a planet that was in the habitable zone of their star, which means that like it could have conditions similar to that of Earth, where we have like an atmosphere, we have water, we have like like the best conditions for life to form. It's so far away, bro. Omega Centauri, the largest globular cluster in the Milky Way. That is the distance to the red supergiant. We're gonna stay far away from that. That is a small megalithic cloud. That is a large megalithic cloud. Oh my gosh, we're moving out into galaxies. This is the distance to other galaxies. And there are so many. The Milky Way is one of the bigger ones, it looks like. The Sombrero Galaxy. Hogue's object is bigger. 
And look at that. Look how tiny the Milky Way galaxy looks in comparison to the Andromeda galaxy. Like, it's just like, there's always a bigger fish in space. But the fish is a galaxy. The Tadpole galaxy. Wow. It looks so cool. Distance Earth has orbited the sun. We, okay. All right. I'm actually pretty proud of Earth for being able to orbit the sun that much. It's orbited the sun 450,000 light years. Distance of the Andromeda galaxy. That's pretty darn far. What is that? The galaxy is abnormally large, containing 100 trillion stars. The Milky Way just has 200 billion. That other galaxy that we've seen has 100 trillion stars. I have no words. And this is just our group. The local group contains the Milky Way, the Andromeda, the Triangulum Galaxy, as well as at least 80 dwarf galaxies. So the amount of planets in our universe is like literally you look up into the night sky and you see stars that there's little planets like literally around probably each one of those stars. And that's only what we can see. There's more that we can't even see. And that's just in our local group. And you can keep zooming out from our local group. Like, look at that. There, there's just a void of a bunch of different galaxies. What are we even looking at? Ooh, the super void. There's a super cluster. We're inside of that, the PC Cetus super cluster. There's the Great Wall. It's like the edge of the observable universe. And then there's one billion parsecs. And there's the Hubble Deep Field. It's an area so small that contains only a few Milky Way stars, but 3,000 ancient galaxies. There's like 3,000 galaxies. And then this is it. Our observable universe. That's it. That's like as far as we can look. That's actually crazy to think that we're able to look, what is that, 93 like billion light years into space? Just using telescopes? Using stuff that we made on Earth. We're able to know all of this information. Just from our little, our little planet that is like smaller than the tip of a pin comparatively to everything in the universe. And it also could just extend further and further and further. We could literally, it's almost like Horton Hears a Who. Like we could be such a tiny little speck. We could be like the size of an atom in, in like just our entire observable universe. We could be the size of a little tiny atom and then there could be more and more and more and more. Like we could be the size of the, the thing at the beginning of the video the what is it? Uh, the not 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 the parsec, but like the the the, the piece of measurement that was the the tiniest thing, the plank, the plank length. We could be the size of a plank length in comparison to everything else that we don't know about, and it's constantly expanding. At least that we can tell, and it just keeps going, and it just keeps going. I feel so tiny right now. If you guys enjoyed. Make sure you leave a like and click this video, which will probably be a little bit, a little bit, uh, less scary. <laughs> Today we're going to turn every single planet into a star, along with a bunch of other things that you guys suggested. If you'd like to leave a suggestion, put it down in the comments below or join the Discord server. Hello everybody, my name's Calvin, welcome back to Universe Sandbox. We got a suggestion to turn every planet into a star. Um, so I was thinking about how to do this, and I think the best way is going to be to do a new simulation and start by putting the sun in, and we're going to need to make the sun a lot bigger, because if we don't make it big enough, the sun will be pulled by the planets, because we're going to have to make the planets bigger so let's just take the sun and make it like a lot bigger like as big as we can really i mean i don't know how big we can make it yeah that'll that'll probably work Thirty thousand suns inside of this sun and let's start with mercury so let's pull up mercury oh here's the old sun for comparison sun to new sun mercury here we'll put it about right here and we need to turn mercury into a star so i think it should be pretty easy all we should really need to do is just make it big enough right I think so because if you make it big enough it'll turn into a gas giant and then from there it'll turn into a star yes okay mercury is now a star orbiting the sun so let's do venus now and since venus is like really hot let's make venus a really hot star so once again we're just gonna make it big enough to become a star and okay it's now technically a star and then we're gonna go to temperature and just like make it really hot 
That's like it super 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 hot. I don't even know how hot that is uh, over a million degrees Kelvin So there's Venus now Mercury and Venus Venus is a super hot star then we're gonna do Earth Okay, so for Earth we'll put it. Oh, I guess we're putting it here Immediately Earth got destroyed <laughs> Burned up. Okay, we're gonna try this again. We're gonna have to do it while it's paused So let's put Earth here because if we unpause it, this star Venus melts anything. Like if we turn on the habitable rings. So here's the sun and here's the sun's habitable ring. And because we made Venus so hot, Venus's habitable ring is all the way out here, which is kind of crazy. So while it's paused, we're going to have to make Earth a uh, star. You can see how bright it is too. Whoa. So let's make it really big. It'll turn into a gas giant. And then again, it'll turn into a star. Um, let's make it a green star. Whoa, I accidentally did that. I guess it has um, whatever that is now, like an accretion disk type thing. Because Earth's the best. Let's make Earth a green star, which is not realistic, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, it, we want it to be a little bit hotter so we can actually like see on it. There we go. Okay, Earth. Earth, <laughs> Earth is a star. looks like that. Okay, now for Mars, we need Mars to be a red star. So let's take Mars. And if we just play it, oh yeah, see if we just play for one little bit, it completely melts the, the face of it because of Venus melting everything. Okay, now Mars is a star and we're going to want it to be hot. Red, oh, look at that. That's like a beautiful red color for Mars. Okay, Jupiter now. We'll put Jupiter out here. Jupiter is already pretty big, so it's not even going to take that much to turn it into a star. There we go. It's already a star. Saturn. Let's give Saturn its rings still. So we'll make Saturn a star and then we're going to add its rings on it too. You can see the blueness of the surface. That's still from Venus. That's the Venus is light. We made it so hot. There goes Saturn as a star. And then let's add Saturn's rings to it. Perfect. Look at that. I bet if we play something will happen to them. Oh, they actually look not too bad. Okay, Saturn as a star with its rings. Let's add Uranus and we're going to make it that blue color for Uranus. Okay, Uranus is blue like this, like this light blue. So we're going to try to copy that on this star. We'll make it a star and then go to visuals and change it to that light blue color. It like wants to be green, but what if I don't want you to be green? It won't let me because it's trying to mix it with the, the red. I guess it'll have to be like a greener color. Or unless we do that, that kind of looks cool actually. Okay, there's Uranus, and let's add Uranus's rings. Okay, there we go. Put Uranus's rings on here. There we go. Okay, Uranus is a star. It's like a dark star. I kind of like it. And the last planet, Neptune. Let's just make this one big. Boom. And since Neptune is like super cold, let's just leave it a dark star, because why not? And just because I feel bad, we'll make Pluto a star too. Don't even worry. Everybody loves Pluto. Boom, there's Pluto. It's still getting light out here from Venus. That's crazy. Boom, Pluto. Let's make Pluto shine brighter than any of the other ones because we love Pluto. Okay, Pluto is now the brightest one in the entire system. All right, so here's every single planet as a star now. And if you'd like this system, the link will be in the description to download it. All right, now we got a suggestion to place a black hole in our system. Uh, so yeah, let's do it. Let's put a, which black hole should we put? We can put, okay, Sagittarius A is the black hole at the center of the Milky Way. And it doesn't look that big, like it is very big, but it doesn't look super huge, even though it is a super massive black hole. So let's pause time, put it right in the middle next to the sun. So the sun's actually inside it right now, um, but you can still kind of see it. And let's just play. Okay, let's set it to, I don't know, one hour every second and see how fast it eats everything. Go. That's one hour every second. So that's pretty quick. I th okay, like, let's see how fast this is moving. 30% the speed of light. Okay, what about like Pluto? Let's see how fast we can get Pluto to go. Speed up time. I wonder if the game will let stuff go faster than light. Because Pluto right now is going, right before it goes in, how fast is it going? About 20% the speed of light. Once things are about to go in is when they're going the fastest. So let's get something that like is about to go in right here. 25% the speed of light. So it looks like it, they're not getting stuff to go the speed of light, just pretty close to it. So yeah, uh, pretty quickly it eats everything. So that's what happens if you put Sagittarius A in the solar system. All right, we got another suggestion to combine the Earth and the moon. So we're going to launch the moon into Earth and see what happens. Slow down time here. Okay, so here's the Earth and here's the moon. So 
let's just set the velocity of the moon to zero and then see if it crashes into earth speed zero i don't know if it will oh it looks like it's coming oh it totally will okay so this is what would happen if the moon just suddenly lost all of its speed it would crash into the earth oh it's coming it's gonna hit africa okay coming right into africa oh that's pretty big boom okay bunch of rock particles launch out and the entire earth gets covered in this giant shock wave looks like it would burn every single person so everyone would die you would die and speed up time and a lot of these rocks are going to come back down and crash again causing even more destruction this is all like dust clouds and gas okay so that's what happens if you combine the earth and the moon let's see how earth ends up after all this so it looks like we got new continents there's a super continent pangea here type thing and then a smaller continent right here um and let's wait for it to cool down like a good amount and let's see its chance of life after this 85 percent. you can see it's still going up so it would probably kill all life but then new life would develop after and we would have no moon so that'd mean no tides all right that's what happens if we combine the moon and the earth vexter 96 from my discord says explode a black hole let's actually okay we're gonna turn the sun into a black hole and then i would go to yoga but i don't have the right gear save on all the best active wear at sierra also i might have sent a Let's actually, okay, we're gonna turn the sun into a black hole and then explode it. So if we lock the mass, but then turn the radius down enough, we're gonna crush it into a black hole. Okay, sun is now a black hole with the same mass as it had before. Um, so the planets will actually stay in orbit, but they won't have any more heating. And okay, now we're gonna go to tools and explode. Let's slow down time because it's going, it's going pretty quick. And we're just gonna click on it and it will explode. Oh, go supernova. Supernova going out, extends throughout the entire solar system. It looks like it's gonna go, yeah, completely engulfs the solar system. All the planets burn to death. All of the inner planets are already dead. Pluto survives, go Pluto, somehow. Let's speed up time and see how Pluto ends up. So all of these planets are gonna turn into rogue planets. There's gonna be no nothing holding them. So they're all just gonna fly out in their own directions and be completely alone in the universe. Pluto will just freeze over and it looks like it does survive though. Alex's thing says, give Earth more moons. Okay, fly out the entire solar system. Fly out and I don't even see 150 maybe. What we can actually do is add a ring and do a moon sphere. Moon sphere right here. So this will add, let's pause it moons all the way around over a hundred moons i don't even see 150 maybe i don't see any above that so let's unpause time now and see what's gonna happen this is a lot of moons for the earth oh it looks like it's going okay right now um it looks like some are gonna crash into each other let's see oh they're gonna all like condense into the same plane oh that's not good crash tons of them just crashed bunch of them hit the earth the earth is dead Let's see what happens. Earth gets hit, bombarded by all these moons. Looks like some of them are going to go into orbit. Some of them escape. So let's turn on the orbit lines and we'll see how... <laughs> look at these orbits. So a lot of them actually are still in orbit. And Earth looks like it will survive after a long time. Um, with, again, new continents. Oh, it looks like it got spun so fast that the centrifugal force pushed the water to this ring state. So it's going to be like desert at the top and bottom. And then all the water is going to be at the equator. That's pretty cool. Seek says, can you make life on Venus? Let's try it. Okay, here's Venus. Um, so the thing with Venus is it is just super, super thick atmosphere that it burns anything. So let's start by making the atmosphere not as thick. So we're going to turn down this atmosphere layers just to one because Earth's only at one. And then also make the atmosphere not as thick. So you can actually start to see the surface. And then we're going to add some water to it. Perfect. And add some vegetation too, like that. Perfect. Okay, Venus, and let's check its habitability rating. And yes, that gives us 85.9% chance of life on Venus. So v Venus would definitely have a good chance of developing life now. Epic Gamer says, make the planet J1407b Super Saturn. So if you didn't see my Space Engine video, um, I went to this planet in Space Engine and it has the biggest rings in the universe that we've discovered. So let's make it. So let's start by searching J1407. And this will give us the star. This is the actual star. And here is the planet. 
Um, so let's put the planet, I don't know, a good ways from the star. And the planet is actually so massive that it starts to heat itself up. So I'm just gonna pause it so it doesn't do that. So to make it have its rings, we're going to start by putting this ring here and then let's adjust it. So the rings actually go out 180 million kilometers. So we're gonna switch this to kilometers and we're gonna type 180 million. 180, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. Here we go, let's add the rings. Boom, okay, it's starting to lag. But here's how big the rings are, which is crazy. Oh, it's like five frames per second. This is how big the rings are. Let's play and see what happens. How fast can we run it? Oh, we can't run the simulation fast at all. But there we go, that's J1407B in Universe Sandbox. That's how big the rings are. We got a suggestion to make Pluto orbit the moon. I don't know if that's possible, but let's try. All right, so here's the moon orbiting Earth and we're gonna try to make Pluto orbit this. We might have to make it really small. Okay, here's Pluto. You can see that they're pretty close in size. The moon is actually slightly bigger. So let's add this here. And if we just play, let's see what happens. Oh, no way, does it work? It looks like it's pulling Earth a little bit, but Pluto is now orbiting the moon. And this is surprisingly way more stable than I thought it was gonna be. Like you can see the moon's orbit is getting altered by Pluto um, enacting tidal forces on it. But this kind of works. This works way better than I thought it would. Let's just speed up time really fast and see what happens eventually. Is this going to work forever? This is as fast as it'll let me run the simulation. But it's been going for a couple years now and it seems like it works. So that, that was a good suggestion. I didn't think it would work. Username Taken says get rid of all of Earth's water, then hit it with a meteor containing all of Earth's water. That's a good one. Okay, so step one to this plan, we're going to take off all of Earth's water. Oh, Earth is now completely dry. Let's actually even get rid of the ice too. Okay, Earth has zero water now. And then we're going to get an asteroid, launch it at the Earth, and then adjust this asteroid to have the same mass as the entirety of Earth's ocean. So you can see Earth's ocean mass right here. So we're gonna set it to one. Okay, this has the same mass as Earth's ocean. And then we need to set it to 100% water. So this is all of Earth's water in one single ball right here. So let's crash it into the Earth and see what's gonna happen. See if it'll replenish the water. You can see some of the water is getting ejected and pulled by the Earth it looks like. But we'll see what happens here. Crash. Okay, crash into it. You can see the water starting to come onto the surface. Some fragments coming down. Okay, now let's just speed up the time and wait for it to cool down and see how it looks. No way, did it work? Okay, it's been about a year, I think, since the crash. Let's see how it looks. Um, it looks like the water's uneven and there's not enough to cover the whole planet. It looks like half of it's flooded and half of it is still dry. Um, so let's actually go into the settings and click settle water. Settle water. And oh my gosh, it looks like it works. It works pretty well. All of the vegetation's dead because we killed everything. But look at that. The water almost perfectly re-went exactly where it was. So let's re-add vegetation. And you wouldn't even be able to tell. I could t say this is normal Earth and you would believe me. That's crazy. That was a great suggestion. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave your suggestions for more things to do in the comments below. Thank you to my patron Borg. You guys are awesome. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.